Hello and welcome everyone to a 3D tutor tutorial in which we're going to get this massive rock as a meteorite and smash this entire bridge into bits. By the way, if you're interested in how I made this bridge, you can check out our other video which will teach you a simple method on grey boxing out your level. And if you're interested in this rock and how I got this, I got it out of the Quixel bridge and it is a tundra small stone and also I changed out the albedo tint to be a little bit darker than it usually is. So just to get a meteor sort of a look. But moving on, with that said and done, let's go ahead and start off by firstly making an entire selection for this bridge. So I already have this grouped up in the way I wanted and basically I'm planning on having a meteorite going through this entire area. So the way I made a selection is I had some pieces left off since they're not going to be needed for part of the simulation as well as the staircase as well. So I'm just going to destroy this entire bridge simply as so. And now with the selection done the way we want it to be, we're now going to go into the fracture mode like so. And now from the fracture mode, we'll need to make a mesh to generate it as a fracture. So we're going to create a new like so and we'll need to specify where the fractured mesh is going to be saved at so i'll just save it within this meteor level folder click create geometry and then we're going to leave some time to generate what it needs and once we're done we're going to get this sort of a color design for our mesh so since it's made into multiple pieces it's going to have multiple colors and that will help us to visualize how it's going to be broken apart so now with this we're going to go into the fracture tab and click uniform and with uniform it's going to give us multiple split pieces cut into kind of a random seemingly seemingly random pattern and that is exactly what we want to get a nice sort of a result there are multiple uh, other presets and we can even make our custom one but that's a little bit more complicated and we're not going to go too much into it but moving on once we have the set fractured we can also increase the amount uh, using the uniform Voronoi and by increasing both for example by default I believe it would be somewhat lower like so but obviously because this bridge is quite a large chunk I'm going to want to increase it to a larger amount so 500 by 500 I think will do the trick to give us some nice broken off pieces like so and also something to keep in mind you probably don't want to overdo it with the amount of slices that you get because that would be more performance heavy so once we get just the right amount, we're going to click Fracture. And once it's done computing, we can now go out of the Fracture mode by going back to Select mode like so. And we can see the amount of fractured pieces that we already have. So now, obviously, this is quite nice to visualize how the chunks are going to be split apart. But we don't want this to be seen within our level. So what we're going to do is, within the search bar, with this selected, we're going to search for Bone and we're going to disable show bone color and what this will do is just give us back the default kind of visual look that we had previously and in today's sponsor raid shadow legends <laughs> no i'm joking it's actually another youtube channel that we teamed up with in order to grow our 3d community we have got together with other youtube channels to hopefully raise a nicer community and get more content and info out to you guys youtube is pretty hard to get traction within and we're hoping that by working together like this, we can raise our subscriber count. That would help us grow faster, in turn, allowing us to make even more amazing content. So it would be really great if you guys could give our friend Stefan over at the Upside Down channel some love and subscribe to his content. He has a fantastic channel over there, dedicated to mostly Unreal Engine 5 content as well. And he focuses mainly on the game design. The one that I especially love is where he builds up a massive game world which honestly doesn't have as nearly views as it should. So if you could check that out and give it a like, honestly he will not be disappointed by it. Since if you're planning to build a next MMO, that would be a good place to start. He shows how to optimize your level using World Petition and also how to just get it started for such a large project in general. So if that sounds like something up your alley and you're interested in it, I'll drop some links down in the description below for you to check out. And I'm hoping it will be a great start for helping build a great community for smaller YouTubes, orientate themselves around digital creativity. Without further ado, let's get back into the tutorial. Now with this done, 
we can finally go ahead and see how our bridge looks. And don't be surprised because when I press play, it is going to be a bit of a mess because I have some pieces sticking in within the other types of pieces and it's going to kind of collide with one another and going to create quite a mess. So in this situation, what we want instead is to change how our physics is behaving. And with the selections for the fracture selected, within the details tab, we're going to scroll down a little bit until we find ourselves underneath the material within the general tab, we're going to find ourselves object type. So from dynamic, if we were to change this to sleeping, now if we click play, we'll see that nothing is going to happen, which is what we want before this meteor hits our area. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to firstly generate some collision for this meteorite. And the way we can do it is if we have it selected, our object, the mesh that we want to use, we can go into the static mesh itself. And for now, I'm going to check if it actually has some collision, some simple collisions or not, which is quite easy to do if we were just to simply click on show and select simple collision. We can check that it has no collision for the simple bound box at all, but it does have a complex collision. But usually we don't want it to use a complex collision. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to generate a collision, which is super simple to do. All we got to do is go onto the collision and select a simplified one of the simplified collisions. We can use something like a sphere or a capsule just to create this sort of a collision. But we can also generate a simplified version of the mesh. And I'm going to use at 18 DOP simplified collision, which is going to give us this sort of result, which I think will work just fine for when when the meteor hits. So now that I have the collision on, we can go ahead and click Control and S to save it. And now I'm going to go out of this mode. And with the meteorite selected, we also have to make sure that it has a collision enabled and working within the level. So we're going to go into the search bar and search for collision like so. So within the collision tab, we're going to get ourselves the collision presets and just make sure that it is set not to no collision, but to either default or block all. I think default will work just fine though. So I'm going to keep it as is. Now what I'll do is I'll actually get this rock and move it across the sky just to smash this entire bridge. So the way I'm going to do it is just going to use a very simple sequence level animation. So we're going to go onto the content drawer. I'll simply dock this onto my view. And now within this, I'll actually go into meteorite, meteorite level and get my level sequencer for whatever we want. We can honestly have it anywhere, but I just prefer this folder. So now I'm going to right click and search for level sequence. So let's go ahead and do that level sequence like so. Make sure though that whenever you're searching, your mouse is not hovering over one of those because otherwise, whenever you search it, it's going to be searching it simply within that category. So if we just have it anywhere above these uh, advanced asset sets, we're going to be just fine. Let's go ahead and search for level sequence like so. We don't have to rename it, can leave it as a new level sequence and drag it out into the world. Now that we have it into our level, we can go ahead and open our level sequence and drag in our meteor into the animator. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to select this rock like so, drag this object into the level sequence like so, and now we can use this to animate our motion. If you don't happen to have a transformation motion within your object, it's all right. We can simply add it by using this track button over here. And by clicking on it, we can click transform and it'll add a transformation motion into the sequencer. So now that we have it, I'm going to position my original start and I'm thinking about getting it somewhere like this. I think this will do all right. Now, once we have the original start position, we're going to click on this button over here to add a new key. With that set, we're going to move the frames and actually right now it is set to zero, zero. So we're going to start off our level sequencer at this motion and now we'll want it to be dragged out a little bit further i say we can have it to whichever amount we want so 120 will be just fine now once we have the sequencer dragged out to the upper area within our animator we can now go ahead and move the rock so i'm just going to move it across just like that to have it smash across the bridge like so and now I'm going to add yet another key 
like so. And we can see the entire line going across the bridge just like that. So now I'm just going to check how it looks like. When we play within the sequencer, it's not going to do anything at the moment because we need to play it within a level itself. But I just want to check how the animation looks like. So let's go ahead and let's play it. And maybe it's a little bit too slow. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix that. And we can speed up the animation by dragging this frame key on to be a little bit closer. And vice versa, if you wanted to make it longer, you can go ahead and do so by dragging it out. And if you feel like you don't have enough of the sequencer, we can always make it longer by extending the working range within the bottom right corner. So if I change it from 165 to 300, I would pretty much be doubling this amount like so. And now if I were to extend this out like so, we can get ourselves a much larger working range. So that is going to be quite nice if we want to work with this sort of a area. Also, make sure just to not forget to extend the working range itself by dragging out this red bar like so. But anyway, once that's done, once everything is done, I'm just going to click play just to make sure. Yeah, I quite like this amount of motion uh, that I get. So I'm going to make use out of it. So once we have the motion set, we're going to go back onto the level sequencer that we have within our level. Once we have this on within our level, we're now going to make sure it is set to autoplay. And now once we click play to play it within our level, we're going to smash this entire bridge. And obviously, this is going to be quite a messy result. We can fix it as up by trying to remove the clustering. So if we were to go on this tab over here, we can disable clustering and it would be a little bit more performance heavy, but it's a quick and dirty kind of a way of fixing it. And now let's go ahead and test this out and see how this looks. And there you go. We have ourselves a fully destructible bridge that gets hit by the meteor and easily destroyed. So there's that kind of a fix. Obviously, because we disabled the clustering, it is going to be more performance heavy, but that is totally fine. There you have it guys, we now have a destructible bridge using a really simple and easy method within Unreal Engine 5. But we're not done quite yet. Now I'm going to speed up the process to make the fire for the back of the meteor. And I'm going to use Niagara Fluid Simulation for that. So if you want to have a similar result, just make sure to enable that within your plugins manager. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to check out our other content as well. We do online courses, 3D modeling, and do lots of other things like material giveaways. You can go over to them by clicking on the links found in the description below. Thanks for watching.